Hey, hey, welcome to this video on gizmos. By the end of the video, you will have these gizmos here, this little black line visualizing where you're moving to, but also if we click on an enemy, you'll see that it shows you where you're gonna stop. So I've got a five meter attack radius right now, and it shows me where I'm gonna stop. It also is showing me the sphere in which I could attack. So I will see you in there. Welcome to my part of section two, Ben back with you, of course. So I want to tell you what the starting point of section two is. The starting point of section two is this video here from section one, 20 CM RPG, the event keyword in C sharp. Now it's possible that after I record this video, I will go back to section one and add more videos after, the, after that. So if you find that when I open my project or this wasn't the last video you did, you find that when I open my project that this is slightly different, then you just need to go back to section one and watch any videos after the event keyword. So this is my starting point, the event keyword. What I want to do in this video is start to explore movement a lot more carefully. If we're gonna attack enemies, we're gonna to want to do things like click on this enemy, have ourselves move to within range of them, and then start attacking as, as Rick explained. So in order to do that, I wanna start visualizing what's going on. Now there's something in Unity called gizmos, They're incredibly handy, and I wanna show you how to use them. So at the bottom of playermovement.cs, I'm gonna write a method or a message called on draw gizmos, like so. Okay, now on draw gizmos is called, uh, I've put a funny curly brace, I think a mismatch here, that's it. It's called every time gizmos are drawn. So when are gizmos drawn? Let me just get my brackets right. Well, let's find out, let's just print gizmo draw and see when that gets drawn, okay, for a start. So just write on draw gizmos and print gizmo draw. Now, I've got an issue somewhere. I'll just let the compiler tell me what the problem is. I've done something silly. Errors have to be fixed. Something doesn't have a return type. And it's because I need to be void on draw gizmos. All right, fine, I'll get my coding eyes in in a minute. So void on draw gizmos. So this is called every time that gizmos are drawn. You'll understand what gizmos are in a minute. Go to the game screen and click gizmos at the top right. If you turn that on, if it's not big enough, you can drag this 3D icons. You can see this guy here. This is a gizmo. This is showing you a directional light in the scene. This camera here is also a gizmo. We can turn them on or off, you see, at the top right of either of the scene or the game window. So I'm going to turn my 3D gizmos down in size a little bit, 3D icons. And what we want to do is we want to make ourselves a custom gizmo. If you've written on draw gizmos in your player movement.co, so any of your classes, you can use gizmos in any of your classes, then it will come up in here. You see player movement. It's got no behavior yet, but it's got it. We can show or hide the player movement gizmos. So what I want to do is now draw a gizmo from player movement after determining when do they draw, when do they get called? Well, look, you see it's getting called a lot, basically, is all you need to know for now, unless I turn gizmos off, in which case if we collapse, we can see this number's no longer going up. And when I turn gizmos back on, the number starts flying up again. So it's being called every frame when you have gizmos turned on. So that answers when does that on draw gizmos get called. Now we wanna do gizmos dot, it's a static method on there, draw line. If we find draw line, now what does draw line want? It wants a from, so let's go from, I'm gonna go from my position of the character to I'm gonna to go to the current click target for the moment and just see what happens. So I'm just gonna go on draw gizmos from where I am to the current click target. Let's see what happens. Might be quite faint on your screen, uh, but if you turn gizmos on, should, maybe I didn't save the script. I didn't save the script, so the script needs to be saved, of course, and you have to have gizmos turned on. If you do that, then look, you see you get this white line between me and the current click target, even in three dimensions as I go up here. Okay, that's cool. Firstly, the line's not very visible. So how do you change that? Well, this is how you change the colors. Gizmos dot color, uh, color equals color dot black, for example. Okay, I'm just gonna comment here, draw movement gizmos. Let's see what happens in black, what it looks like in black. Now, this is how you paint with gizmos. Ah, so we have a black line. Now, I want a sphere or two at the end of my line. I firstly want a sphere to tell me where the end of the line is. So gizmo dot draw sphere. Now, what parameters does that take? What's the center of the sp sphere? Well, let's make it the current click target. And what's the size? I don't know, let's try 0.1 of a unit. What does that do for me? Can leave it running, of course, the game. 
Ah, you see, now I'm seeing what my current click target is. That's pretty cool. All right, now, there's something else I want to do. Remember in the player script, we have this walk, stop, move, stop radius. as 0.2 of a meter. I'm just going to set that to one meter for visibility for the moment. What does that actually do? Well, look, let's see if this helps us. If I click on the edge here, you see how it's difficult to see, actually. Click on the edge of the cube. You can probably just detect that he's stopping a meter short. The easier way is to just set that to a large value, like five meters, and now maybe click on the edge of the blue there. You see he's stopped already. Or if I was to click here, but that's confusing, right? I want to be able to see why he's stopping short. So I'm going to go ahead and find out a way of visualizing why this guy's stopping short. So we've introduced the gizmos. We've, in, we've imported some codes to visualize the movement. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, well, before I add attack stop move radius, what I'm going to do is visualize walk stop radius or walk move. Oh, well, walk stop radius. Can't remember what the exact method name is or parameter name is or, or, or what do we call it? Um, member variable name is, it doesn't matter. So I want to visualize this thing, this walk, move, stop radius. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to go and borrow some code from a prototype I've done. So the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to say this camera raycaster, where are we? Here, this hit, click, this hit point is actually our click point. So I'm just going to put this, if you click the mouse, then I'm going to have a variable called click point equals camera raycaster hit dot dot point. All right, just call it click point. I'll declare that in a moment. And then when we click on a walkable layer, the current click target is click point. I've just refactored that bit to the top. So let's make ourselves a click point. Current click target and a click point. OK, so we have a click point just taken up to the top here, and we set the current click target to the click point. That's not going to change anything. I'm just moving things around in preparation. So here he goes. He runs around. If you wonder what those little red dots by the, by the way, they're animated gizmos. You can turn those off in the list here. There's uh, something in the list is animation, animator gizmos there. Okay, so that's that. Now, what we want to do is we need to shorten. We need a shorter vector than the one that gets all the way from where we are to the click current click target. So what I've done in my prototype is I've said click point we've just done. What I've said is the current destination. I'm just renaming current click target current destination. So let's just do that so it's clear. Current destination. Okay, that's just a simple rename. What we're saying is that the current destination is some shortened distance of the click point by the walk move stop radius. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's the point of the gizmos. It's going to help us visualize what that means. But it's saying take a vector from me to the click point, but shorten it by the walk stop move radius. So we need this short destination function. I'm going to go get that. I'm going to paste that function in somewhere spare like this. That's great. So what does this thing do? It takes in a destination, a vector, it takes in a shortening float, and then the reduction vector is the vector from where you are to your destination, normalized, so reduced to a length of one, times the shortening. So that's how much you shorten it by. So if this was 0.3 of a meter, then, then you would have a vector along the direction you're moving of length 0.3 of a meter. Then you subtra subtract that reduction vector away from your destination, and you get what you need, i.e. the short destination vector. But had that, that's like, oh, whatever, whatever you say, man, because you've got to think that through more carefully in order to, uh, to believe that. But this is why we're doing gizmos. Just trust this method for a moment. And let's just try and see what happens. Hang on. What I want to do is as well visualize not only the current destination like that, but I want to visualize the click point in a perhaps a smaller or a bigger sphere. Let's try a bigger sphere, see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm purposely, I understand that you don't really understand what's going on yet until now. Look at that. Now we're drawing a line out to the, to the click point, and then the, a bigger circle is saying, well, if I click here, this saying the click point's the big circle, and the place where we're going to stop is the little circle. Now you can mess around with that. You can, you know, you can draw the line to the click point, and you can switch around the size of these guys, and you can change the colors. You can do whatever you like. But what I want you to do is start thinking about how you're going to use these type of gizmos in your game. Isn't that cool? You see, now if we go to the player and we change his walk, move, stop radius back to 0.2, you see that these two things are very, very close. 
But what it allows us to do is to create a similar facility when it comes to attacking enemies and see exactly what's going on, which is going to be rather cool. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this enemy and I'm going to duplicate him. In fact, I'm just going to grab myself an enemy prefab and dump him up on the top here. So that when we move into the next phase, which is talking about uh, adding an attack stop move radius, then we can have an enemy at the top here so we can see the vector, the line, okay? So I hope that made some sense what we're doing there. We're simply just saying let's short, shorten this vector so that we don't move to, you, you, see, you see what we were doing before is this. We were, we were getting a mouse click and if it was walkable, we were, we were just setting a destination and then down here, we were walking until we were outside the walk, move, stop radius, but we don't need that now. We now can say, actually, provided that the distance to the current destination is greater than zero, we keep moving, otherwise we stop moving. So we only we deal with the stop radius up here, we shorten the vector. So let's just make that change and see that it still works. So what have I got my, my player? One meter, so if I click there, I'm one meter away, or here, that's all good. All right, so I'm gonna set that back to 0.2 and apply it back to the prefab, because remember that was just to make sure you're not right butt up against somebody when you're attacking them and that you don't spin around on the spot. That's cool. All right, so we've slightly changed the architecture. This, this bit where it just walks to, in fact, we could even extract this now because there's no, it's not reading from anything. I think we can now just say, okay, let's extract this method and call it, uh, you know, walk to, walk to destination. All right, so then it's clearer because the whole process mouse movement method is much, much clearer now. It just says, get the mouse, get the hit point. If it's walkable, shorten the destination by the walk radius. If it's an enemy, don't move yet. Otherwise, say you've got an unexpected layer. Okay, and then walk to the destination. Then walk to the destination does that stuff, which is now boring enough to fold down. And then we do a short destination helper method, which we can fold down, and then we draw some gizmos. All right, cool, cool, that's looking good. So what we're gonna do now is to move on and put in an attack stop move radius and think about what happens if we attack. Now you're welcome to do this. If you can see the pattern, go ahead and do it yourself. If you can't, then I'm gonna just help you by going ahead and doing it now anyway. Your challenge, by the way, if you wanna know what the challenge is, is gonna be, is to set up gizmos however you want them in the game, basically. It's all about gizmos, but I'm gonna sort this move radius while we're here. So an attack, attack move radius may default to maybe five meters. It's your current attack range. We'll call it attack move stop radius for now though, rather than current attack range or anything like that. So the attack move stop radius is five meters. That means if we save that, that back in the game, on the player, and on all of the other instances of a player, we get a five meter attack stop move radius, wicked. Now we need to say that if we hit a enemy, that the current destination, rather than not gonna move to enemy, is shorten the destination, take the clip point, but shorten it by the attack stop move radius. Aha, uh -huh. let's see how that works. Okay, so it's very simple, very similar treatment, and then just walk to the destination, whatever the destination is because we've already taken the distance off, much easier to comprehend. So when I click on the ground, this happens. What happens when I click on this guy? You see what's happening? And that's a very clear visualization. How about this guy? I move to within five meters. How cool is that? You see, so you get very, very good affordance. Now, of course, you can turn these gizmos off and tidy everything up, but there you go. How's that? Another thing we could do, for example, by the way, is we could come in here and we could draw attack sphere. And we can go gizmos.color equals, I'm gonna make a transparent one this time, new color, and then I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it red. So 255, um, zero, so green, blue, zero, so just pure red, and then I'm gonna make it about 50% transparent, that's the alpha, 0.5, all right? And then I'm gonna go gizmos.drawsphere, and I'm gonna put it at my position, just giving you some other options here, and I'm gonna give it a radius of uh, attack stop move radius, how's that? So he's gonna draw himself a sphere, transparent, should be a red 50% transparent sphere, which is the size of the attack stop move radius, i.e. five meters, does that look right? Um, not really, what's wrong with that sphere? It's a bit too big. Let's just adjust the size of the sphere. Two meters, uh, maybe it is right. Maybe it's just the way that's rendering. 
looks a bit off to me, but actually if you look at it from the side, it's not off, you see. You see if I click on, um, yeah, that is the five meters. That's really strange. It's a perspective thing that I, I'm just, the sphere's kind of bulging over the top. And what actually happens is that if you look right on the side here, it does kind of come back down to within five meters. Because we're looking at it from up here, we're seeing through the top of it. So it's not, from this angle, it's not a particularly good visualization, but it does show you your current attack range. It just only really works if you zoom around in the scene, like so. So I could turn that back off again very easily by just by just commenting out this uh, this line this for the moment. In fact, I'm going to comment it all out and just leave it in as a comment as an option for you. But you could have these spheres draw whatever. You can try try just looking at Gizmo's dot and see what you've got. Draw rays, spheres, meshes, lines, wire spheres, wire cubes, etc. I mean, I may have been better off with a wire sphere, for instance. We could try that. And just see if that helps. Control C, Control K, Control U rather in Visual Studio to uncomment. Let's see what the wire sphere looks like. And then I'm going to give up on my gizmos. Yeah, that's somewhat better. So if I now click on an enemy, you can see that the enemy ends up on the edge of my attack radius. So that's quite cool. There you go. Anyway, time for your challenge. What I want you to do is to, if I can find the slide, Set up and share your gizmos. Set up gizmos to help in your project. Take a screenshot and share in the discussions what you've done and remember to explain your thinking. So congratulations. If you're wondering what code I wrote in that video, if there's a lot of it, remember you can see that in lecture project changes in your resources and I will see you in the next video.